This episode of the Justin Robert Young Podcast is brought to you by everybody who subscribes over at patreon.com slash J-U-R-Y. Wink! We are, uh, you know, ever ever slipping uh, through the 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 uh, currents of life. It, it is me, your old pal Justin Robert Young, joining you yet again for another episode of the Justin Robert Young podcast. Uh, you know, and 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 this is one of those things where I have found myself over the summer doing this a little bit too much for my taste, a little bit too much of explaining, a little bit too much excuse making. I've told you guys that I'm working on this show. I've told you guys this is always a work in progress. I've told you guys I'm going to take it more seriously. I've told you guys I got a lot of shit on my plate. But what I don't need to tell you is that there's been some sloppy workmanship on this show. <laughs> you know, there's been a lot of shit going on. And, 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 and at times, the Justin Robert Young podcast, which I have found to be a refuge for me to talk about whatever I like, hasn't had the requisite amount of work that should go into it so you guys can enjoy it. And that has been reflected in the views, in the listens, in the YouTube comments, and on the Patreon. The good news is we're out of the storm. We have, uh, this is like that scene in Forrest Gump when uh, they, uh, they, sure, they, their, their uh, boat, uh, uh, Lieutenant Dan and, and Forrest, was, uh, was battered. When they were out in the sea and the hurricane hit, but the good news was they were out in the sea. The boat stayed afloat and it didn't get wrecked like all the other boats that stayed in the dock. And now we are the only one finding shrimp. That was a long way for an analogy. But here's what I'm saying. No more wedding. I'm on uh, I'm here in California for the next month. What? No more fucking conventions for the year. Holy shit, we might have a little bit of stability, a little bit of room to grow, a little fresh fucking soil so we can plant a seed and watch it take shape, right? So here's the deal. We're back. We're ready to roll. Thank you to everybody who has dealt with me putting up the fucking episodes in bunches on Patreon because I forget to do it. Thank you to everybody who uh, has, has continued to spread the word on this podcast. Thank you to everybody who has sent me amazing, heartfelt emails that I have not responded to nor read on this podcast, despite the fact that I set a fucking expectation that you could put your trust in me and I would give you some reciprocity on this very program we're gonna dig through a shit ton of old emails on this show also we're gonna keep our experiment going and we're gonna leave open phone lines while i read the emails uh that number again is 954-892-5665 go ahead and put it in your phones and just say jury so you can just type in pop 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 or you can just say siri call jury and it will go billy loop and call not now but later what are we going to talk about now? I'm glad you asked. This was a heavy travel week for me. I was out there on the road a lot. Not a whole lot of time to fucking shit or wind my watch 
Although I don't know why those two are always painted as mutually exclusive. Seems like something you can do at the same time. More to the point. Found myself a little, uh, a little, a little, uh, I mean, a little low. A little emotionally uh, vulnerable. Something about traveling, man, it just lowers your, your shields a little bit. Puts your ego on notice. Especially when, you know, you just, you, you go, uh, you know, we, I was together with Ashley nonstop for like two weeks. It was amazing, even though it was extraordinarily stressful to put the wedding on. We head out. We do the, uh, we, we do the, 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 the honeymoon in Jamaica. Playing fucking zoomy zoomy by the pool bar. Hella nice. Next thing you know, I'm out on the road. Fucking uh, trying to trying to put some millet on the table for the bird family. And there was a point in this week where I was I was like on or off flights. I think I took eight flights this week in a week span. I was on eight different planes going in different directions. And at some point, I found myself on a red eye. This is on Tuesday night. Man, we had a knockback night attack a while because we were trying to, uh, to to adjust for the fact that Brian was was out in California filming his his dance program, and uh, and I had just the the shittiest travel schedule. So the reason why was because Tuesday I had a game in San Jose. All right, then I got to turn right the fuck around, get on a flight from. San Francisco to Detroit, drive an hour to Ann Arbor and do a game at 2 p.m. the next day. Game in San Jose, 5 o'clock at night. Do that, wrap it up. It's about 9, 10 o'clock by the time that shit's all done. Get all my shit together for the next game, head to the airport, and I'm sitting on. Well, first I go, fun little travel tips by gerbs. If you find yourself in the San Francisco airport, and you have a United Club membership, and all the other United Clubs are closed or don't have bartenders on service, head on over to the International Terminal because their bar never closes. They got motherfuckers coming in at all times of the night. They got to keep a bartender there at all times. Fun facts from me to you. So I'm there, and I have about three or four glasses of red wine. I'm trying to work on this fucking Tempo Mage deck that just got fucking stalled out at rank 15 this season. Total fucking waste of a season, September was for me in Hearthstone. I'm drinking. There's one glass. Pa! Playing this Tempo Mage. Trying to fucking get my... The might of Dalaran has arrived to fucking pop out three arcane missiles so I can then... Have my Archmage Antonitis, aha, his way to a bunch of fireballs, and I conflagrate this motherfucker on the other side of the board. Another red wine, glug, 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 glug. I'm fucking losing. I'm losing to fucking aggro pally. I'm losing to handlock. I'm losing to secret pally. I'm losing to motherfucking oil rogue. Another wine, glug, 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 glug. Drink that shit, and then eventually I find myself on the flight to Detroit. It's a red eye flight. I'm drunk. I order another red wine. Glug, 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 glug. And it's at that point that I make a fateful decision. So I'm feeling raw. I'm away from my wife. I'm working a lot. I just ran a game. I gotta run another game. What is incumbent upon me right now is nothing other than to sleep so I can be prepared by the time I get to the Detroit Motor City. And it is in that moment, in that confluence of emotions, that I turn to Taylor Swift. I don't know why. I don't know how. I do. It was Apple Music. I decide that it's about time that I listen to Taylor Swift. No clue. I think it was partly because of the Ryan Adams cover thing and I was interested to listen to the Taylor Swift album so I could listen to the Ryan Adams album and I could compare and contrast because I found it to be an interesting idea Taylor Swift 1989 so here I am imagine this I am sitting next to a man 
who works, lives in uh, Alabama, or no, sorry, Mississippi, and <laughs> works on pipe welding. Pipe welding in Alaska. This man is drunk. I am drunk. We're talking about pipe welding. And next thing you know, he turns over to go to sleep. We're about to take off. I put, oh, I'm in first class, by the way. Uh, I put in my two earbuds, and I begin to listen to Taylor Swift. I have fewer times, very few times in my life have I had a really emotional response to an album like I did to Taylor Swift's 1989. It's like, I'm not, listen, man, I'm not here to tell you that Taylor Swift's a great artist. I'm not here to tell you that you should listen to Taylor Swift's 1989. Every man walks his own path, and I'm just giving you a step-by-step -step explanation of how I walked mine. But in that moment, in that moment of vulnerability, in that moment of four wines in, I found myself resonating with the clear, concise, and passionate songwriting that Taylor Swift has delivered on this, and apparently I hear from people, other albums. She, I don't know if it spoke to me, I don't know if I related to it, but I was definitely very much enjoying it, and I found myself like, I, I really, goddamn, I, I, I wish there was video. I was just silently kind of like pumping my head. I was pumping my fist to like wildest dreams. It's, uh, I don't know. I, and then I listened to the Ryan Adams version. It kind of sucks. Taylor Swift's better at being Taylor Swift than Ryan Adams. Who knew? I have a conundrum that has raged for, for decades. If not, you know, it will be something that will go down in the annals of history, as one of life's great unsolved mysteries, uh, that and so much of your uh, phone calls, or sorry, phone calls and emails coming up on this episode of the Justin Robert Young Podcast. But first, this. Let me ask y'all a question. For real, all right? Don't bullshit me on this. This is a real serious question. What if Hitler was a dog? Okay, all right? I know I've asked it before. I know that we've all thought about it. It's about time we revisit it. What if Hitler was a dog? Okay? Would, would, would we still have had uh, the same problems? Maybe. All right? There's a couple ways to come at this. First... What if Hitler was just a regular dog, okay? And he was, like, as charismatic as human Hitler, but he was a really, really, really charismatic dog. Would, would, that, uh, would that be a thing, you know? Would, would he definitely have, uh, uh, you know, uh, conquered everything that he did? Would he have been the linchpin in the axis of evil? No. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe he still would have uh, bluffed his way past Neville Chamberlain. Maybe ne Neville Chamberlain would come up and he's like, you're not going to invade Poland. Are you going to invade Poland? No, you're not. You're just a cutest little dog. Ah. But then you get to the more interesting equation. So maybe Hitler would not have conquered Europe and caused the Holocaust if he were just a regular dog. But what, friends, if he were indeed... A talking dog. Mmm. Now it gets a little interesting. So we have a couple forks to go here. If he were a talk... What if he's a talking dog like the ones on YouTube? What if he's like, I'm Hitler! And, and everybody in Germany is like, is he saying I'm Hitler? I'm Hitler! Like, oh, wow. You know, uh... I'm Hitler! Is that Germany Uber Alice? Germany Uber Alice. What if that's it? What if he's just a Rorschach for which 
a beaten down state of Germany, post-World War I, decides to invest all of their hopes and fears. And next thing you know, everybody's blaming this dog that may or may not be able to talk. Ah, but the most diabolical version is if he definitely can talk like he's in some kind of movie using a, a Eddie Murphy voiceover. In fact, what if Hitler the dog was voiced by Eddie Murphy? Oh, shit. You weren't fucking expecting that one, huh? No, 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 no. This is the ultimate weapon. In fact, I feel that Hitler, were he a dog, voiced by Eddie Murphy, would have done more damage throughout the world. We, in fact, friends, dodged a bullet by not having this fast-talking, wise-cracking, adorable movie franchise waiting to happen, steering the death boat throughout the history of this motherfucking planet. We are lucky that Hitler was a human. We are lucky that we avoided something so devastating and so dangerous. What you talking about, Goebbels? That's a bad Eddie Murphy. Maybe that was just something else. That was his friend. Maybe he had a sidekick. That's what I think. What if Hitler was a dog? You know, it's it's uh, it, it, it is a, it is a question that I think we all need to we all need to do. We all need to we all need to run run over. Email me what your thoughts. What if Hitler was a dog? Justin uh, Robert Young at gmail.com. Put jury in the subject line. We get a hell of a lot of email. I've gotten a hell of a lot of email in the last uh, uh, month. We're going to do that and open the phone lines coming up right after this. This program, Justin Robert Young at gmail.com. Uh, some quick housekeeping. Politics, politics, politics records tomorrow. Going to do the first episode of the Politics Podcast tomorrow. The Politics Podcast will fall under the same Patreon as the Jury Podcast. So if you want to support one or both of them, go ahead and uh, and donate to patreon.com slash jury. Also, uh, we have the movie draft tomorrow. And I'm going to be on the Raw recap uh, for uh, the Aubrey Citizen Venture Straight Shoot tomorrow after Monday Night Raw, talking about wrestling. Uh, another thing about this podcast, I am going to, uh, and I mentioned this a little bit on, on last week's show, uh, we're going to be shifting the format just a little bit, just kind of moving toward where I think we already do the best, uh, and that is going to be uh, by way of a theme. Each week at the end of the podcast, I'm going to tell you the theme for next week's podcast. And during that theme, it'll give you guys uh, something to email in, awesome uh, awesome stuff that you guys want to talk about that is in that theme. Or you can give us a call during the show and we can talk about it. Some of them, gonna be, uh, some of them are going to be kind of uh, more newsworthy. Some of them are going to be more broad. But hopefully this does what, or sorry, uh, 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 continues to increase what this podcast i believe does best which is to uh engender dialogue where everybody's able to be honest and have fun and holy shit do we got a fucking crock pot of this stuff for you on the program right now because i have not gone through my email really since the wedding and, and we had some fucking doozies here all right first one comes in from joe uh, Joe uh, had, had some really, really nice things to say about the show, but finds himself in a career pickle. He writes, I got to be honest, my broadcasting degree threw me into a job that is difficult. I'm living with my parents. I'm in a point in my life where I feel like I have very few friends. Even friends that have stuck with me in the past feel somewhat distant. I've been in dark places re recently, more so than I ever have been. I've had some in intense... Uh, I've had some intense nights... Uh, of binge drinking, even when I don't feel that bad at the beginning of the night. Things have been scary for the past few months, to say the least. But things are looking up. I've started seeing a therapist and ha after having a nervous breakdown, and she's very good. 
My fiance and I are growing closer every day, and that distant date a year from now is now a bright light in an ever-shortening tunnel. And my dream job will start paying me soon. About a year and a half, I was working at the Geek Group. We're a maker space, and we do lots of fun maker stuff. I joined under the pretense of doing some audio work for them as an internship. Then I never left. The president of the group saw something in me. He told me that he wanted me to run the recording studio after its construction. He told me he wanted to construct it myself. Then we had a setback. So we made, we made an internet radio station set where I got to write and host shows that will be online as podcasts in addition to their live recordings. But throughout this time, I haven't been paid. The Geek Group is a nonprofit that simply has no money to pay its staff. This has been a major source of stress for me as it is exactly what I want to do in my life. The people, the place, the mission, everything is what I want to do and be around. And the thought of leaving it to work for the local ABC affiliates morning show fills me with dread. I'm bringing this up because it's because of people like you and Brian and Andrew and Scott that keep me fighting to keep my, to make my dream job something that I can do. It's through watching you work your asses off to make good content, even though you're traveling all the time and working a day job, that uh, makes me fight for what I truly want to do and I feel like I can do. He then goes on to kind of ask more specifically whether or not he should be taking precautions to go with this job to follow his happiness. Number one, let's break this thing down. We're going to keep it root down, break it on down. Joe, listen to me. You got a lot of shit on your plate. And as that one right stripe song quotes, when darkness smothers you, uh, you should take the lesson from the squirrel who stored his nuts one by one for the harsh cold winter. Here's what you need to do. First and foremost, you got to get your mind right. Because anything that you are dealing with right now, you are looking through a dirty lens. Like you said, you're in a better position than Try to take a fresh look at where you are and don't necessarily rely on assumptions that you made when you were very, very sad. Sadness is an invasive concept. Depression is insidious in how it affects your life and then, even when you're in a better place, makes you believe that you've already gone over a lot of the things that might you might have a different perspective on if you really sat down and took a fresh look at it. So... Looks like you have an opportunity to work at a, a, a gig that will pay you a little bit more money. All right? If the stability is something that you really, really want, then that's a very good thing. If you have an ability to work with this geek group and continue to do what you're doing for a little bit of money or no money at all, then you are in a position where you can at least make yourself happy. What I would suggest is that the happier you get and the more productive you are, the more you will not see this as a one-in-one -one dichotomy, as, as, as a mutually exclusive situation. It is my personal philosophy that every hobby that can become a job will do so when it demands so. Work your hobby as hard as you can until your hobby is hitting a glass ceiling and you can't go any further with it. If the money that you can make on the other side of it, if the, if the work is already there, then that hobby is ready to come up to the big leagues. But if not, don't believe that free time will ignite it. Because in many ways, free time with your passion is, is not necessarily a good thing. Sometimes it's a paralyzing thing. It's hard to build the engine when you're also worried about some other stuff. You know, and you're worried about whether or not there's money coming in. You know, it's easier to build the engine when you can think about it as a pure idea. And in this case, the engine is your career, is your career that you want to make from this geek group or, or whatever you want to do. So I would say you're going to, the, the more you look at this, and the more you get your head together, you got a fiance, worry about that wedding, man. I'll tell you what, don't be making any fucking life decisions while you're planning a wedding. I'm going to go ahead and let you know that right now. That's a bad fucking idea because there's a lot uh, of your emotional state that goes into shit like that. And even if you're not doing a big wedding, like it, there's just, it's just an, an emotionally taxing time. And, and, and it, it, it's hard to look at things at face value. Uh, by the way, if somebody, uh, uh, I've gotten, I've gotten a few calls 
uh, uh, from people that I assume are the fucking soundboards. I'll take one soundboard call. Uh, but if you'd like to call, let me go ahead and throw that number on the screen right now. You can go ahead and give us a call, 954-892-5665. In the meantime, I'm going to read one from... Uh, Mm, let's do a short one here. Oh, let's go ahead and uh, and, and and read a uh, 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 a little thing from Amos. Amos wrote me with a audio clip. Let's go ahead and hear that now. Hey, Justin, been a while since I I emailed in. I I wanted to let you know that it's it's a bad idea to get fucked up. And then record yourself and email it to podcasters you like. So, I'm sorry. Uh, and then he writes in the email, I truly am not sorry. So, thanks, Amos. <laughs> I love these emails. I love shit like this. It makes me so happy. All right. Let's get some good news in this bitch. Stuart writes, uh... He had, all right, so again, a million words in this email. I, I, I loved every single one of them, but I mean, fuck, Stuart, Jesus, come on, man. I got to read these on the show. Uh, he had just gone through a divorce. He uh, got back into inline skating, and he met uh, a girl, and uh, this is where we pick up the story. Her jaw hit the floor when I said, yeah, it really sucks when a marriage breaks down around you. I was pretty much where you are now about a year ago. I know it's hard, but it gets better. More talking and skating. Uh, I take some photos and videos for her and send them to her mom in Brazil. And all too soon, it's time for my class. Before I go, she makes sure I add her on Facebook and we exchange phone numbers. Now, here is where you come in. Oh, by the way, he, he blames all this on me in a good way. Um, I put forward the basic skeleton of all my previous ideas in my previous call and ran with it. He fleshed it out and I listened. And I thought to myself at the time, I never looked at it quite like that. During our time together, Priscilla has made me feel special. I'm awesome, perfect, her hero. She doesn't know where I'm broken. She doesn't know of my insecurities. She's looking at me with new eyes and hearing with new ears. In the following weeks, I did the same for her. I've shown her how she looks through another person's eyes and told her what I was doing. I've made her feel special and capable because that's what she is. I've been down to London many times since, but every time she was unavailable to meet, with me for various reasons. Until, of course, this Sunday. I met with her in Hyde Park. She chose to walk with me to my car, which was about six miles away. What the fuck? How far did you fucking park, dude? Six miles? You trying to fucking uh, train for a marathon? What the fuck? So she walked you six miles away, despite having an injured leg. What the fuck, Stuart? You make this lady walk with a fucking injured... Or do you have an injured leg? Like, is, is, is this... The, uh, do you have a scooter? What the... F I, all right, this is all very confusing. We drove around London after dark. Got lost. Found a friend's barbecue. I took her back to her place. We got lost again. Seven hours spent together getting to know each other better. At midnight, I stopped the car near her house. We talked some more. Then we ran out of words as our eyes met. Now, I'm really out of practice and quite dense when it comes to these things, but I found the courage somewhere to lean in and kiss her, and I wasn't shot down. Fuck yes, Stuart. Even after you made this poor motherfucker walk six miles with a bum leg. You dirty bastard. I'll tell you what, maybe you tired her the fuck out. Maybe she was just kissing you because she thought that this six-mile death march was some sort of saw-like torture, and this was the only way to get out of it. He ends his editorial comment. Continuing his, his writing again. We're taking things slowly. Uh, she only split with her husband a few months ago and has a lot to process right now. I've only ever felt this way about one other person before, not my wife, incidentally, and I managed to fuck it up. I'm 13 years older and wiser. Anyway, whatever happens from here, I'm sure it's going to be a fun ride wherever we end up. For the listeners of Chat Round the Dime, Diamond and the Diamond Club, listen to Uncle Justin. He knows what he's talking about a lot more than he likes to admit, and if you're single, find yourself a hobby or pastime that will get you out meeting people. If you lack confidence, just pretend you're confident. Other people can't tell the difference, and eventually it becomes second nature. Lastly, always go with the decision that makes for the best story later. That is a great summation of a lot of my life, uh, life's philosophies. Here's the only thing I'm going to tell you, Stuart. Uh, if she only uh, split with her husband uh, a few months ago, uh, just be careful. Careful, bro. 
because that one might be, you might just, friends, be friends. Focus on being friends because you might not like it if you're more than friends and this is a, a, a codependency situation. It's, it's, it's not like it's bad, right? It's just that you're going to get a lot of other emotions caught up in something that you need to take. I mean, like, again, build, build a nice house. Lay a good foundation. I've seen people who are trying to call in here on the, on the Google+, Plus, but I guess we're having another one of these uh, uh, shitty cell reception things. So just go ahead and keep ringing if you want to call in because I know people are trying to get in. Let's go ahead and uh, talk to Marin real quick. Marin writes in, Hello, Justin. So you've probably already been made aware by your numerous Australian listeners that things have been a bit different in Australian Australian politics. I didn't see you mentioned it anywhere, but it's probably due to my crappy Google food than anything. So here's a quick breakdown. Our onion-eating Prime Minister, Tony Abbott, is out. The technology businessman, Malcolm Turnbull, is now in as Prime Minister. I'll have to come up with a witty non-onion related thing for him after he's been in power long enough to make a hilarious gaffe. The cabinet, uh, main ministry, not sure what the direct U.S. correlation would be, now has five women up from two, a 25-year-old as an assistant minister for innovation, and a new focus on, quote, embracing the future. As a left-leaning infrastructure, city structure, and economics nerd, I'm leaning towards quietly optimistic. The realist in me knows that the odd political behavior we've seen, politicians ousting each other for the last few years outside of elections, will probably continue if the weird relationships between journalists and politicians continue. Long conversation there. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, so, I love Australian politics. I have no idea what the fuck's going on here. I gotta get... We, uh, I gotta get my, my, my buddy uh, on to, to talk about it because we, we still owe you guys... A, a a an Australian politics episode. Uh, this is uh, this is in- important. It's now important more than ever uh, for me to talk to my friend uh, to 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 go over this because I, I'm very I'm very curious. Uh, finally, war cow. Uh, I'm writing this from a really low point right now. I've been fighting depression for at least two years now. I've not looked for help. For this because I'm really bad at asking for help. I've never been able to ask for help and often will actively avoid it when offered. I've previously seen a therapist, but it was a number of years ago. During that time, I had two major problems. The first was a suicide attempt. The second was that I tend to blame myself for everyone else's problems to the point that to this day, I blame myself for self-harm scars on strangers. I am aware that this is completely irrational, but it's so ingrained for some reason in my mind that I can't help it. I know this most recent bout of depression I can link to an event. About two years ago, I was married to somebody for whom I still care about, but the combination of distance and my depression ended last year in November. The event was my now ex-wife moving four hours away to live with her parents. Her leaving was related to issues with my parents and not between the two of us. After that event, I stopped being social almost entirely. I would not leave my bed unless I wanted to go to work. I would not get out of bed or shower for days. At the same time, I was having issues at work, which only made things worse. This is the lowest point I've been in in a long time. And I would like to state that I don't, uh, I want you to worry. I'm not having suicidal thoughts currently. And uh, I will make it through this point. I just needed to write this down. All right. This is War Cow. War Cow's written in before. um, And and, and I know War Cow, these have been issues uh, that you've uh, continued to deal with for a pretty long time. Uh. Again, let me let me let me fucking highlight one thing for everybody, just so everybody knows what the fuck is going on. I need everybody to just understand that there is such a thing as a shame spiral. All right? That when you are spiraling down, like basically as soon as you have when you are depressed, All other depression is discounted. (laughs) Like, you all of a sudden start getting, like, you you know when, like, uh, you you get a new credit card or something like that, uh, and all of a sudden you start getting uh, uh, mailers for other credit cards? It's like that. So you're depressed about something, something's fucking you up, and all of a sudden you are now finding 
other little bits of depression because you are rolling downhill and you are a little depression snowball that is turning into a larger, uh, a comically sized, gigantic depression snowball. But let's get back to the spiral analogy because this is what I, I, I think is very interesting. Because I've certainly been a part of this. I've, I've known a lot of people. And this is just how I have best explained my own situations. When you're in a spiral, you're walking downward. And every time you look up to think how you're going to get out of it, the distance looks that much farther, which then reinforces that getting out of it is impossible, which leads to bad behavior, which leads to more depression. You start to discount your own actions because you don't believe that you are worthy of them or you believe that there is shame for other actions that you've done. When I read this email from WarCow, all I see is a lot of shit that is a, initially painful, and then B, a lot of behavior that is conducive to glomming on every other little depressive element of your life. So here's what I want to say. Like, and everybody's got their own road. Everybody's got to figure out shit for themselves. But this is one thing that I fucking totally know for sure. It is never too late to start walking back upwards. In fact... You've never been closer to the surface than you are right now. Because the thing about a spiral is it really only goes one way. It either goes up or down. And either you are working to get back to the surface or you are giving yourself cover to walk down further. Now, it's not like this is just a, 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 a thing that you need to, uh, you know, that, that, that you are, are, are in, uh, you know, a, a situation on for which you are, you know, alone. Like a lot of times there's just no other way to deal with stuff. You got to spiral a little bit. You got to get it out of your system. But the muscle you need to work is walking back up. The muscle you need to work is the one that gets you up out of where you are. And I know it's not that easy. I know it's not flipping a switch. I know it's not just some fucking asshole on the internet yelling at you and then all of a sudden all your life is better. And I'm not trying to trivialize the complexities of anybody's depression, let alone assume that I'm in any way a fucking medical person who is here to diagnose something, okay? I'm not no doctor. I am somebody who's been depressed. And the healthier I got, is directly correlated to how much I wanted to look up instead of down. I don't think that anybody can say that that's not a fact. And if anything, if you have in your head an idea that, that this is impossible, I'm just going to tell you that it ain't. If you'd like to support this show, you can download it on Stitcher, iTunes, or some other shit. In fact, you want to know what? New game. Write reviews. Write reviews on iTunes. Write reviews on Stitcher. Write reviews anywhere you can fucking find it. Listen to it on SoundCloud. You can email me, justinrobertyoung at gmail.com. Put jury in the subject line. That is J-U-R-Y in the subject line. Twitter and Instagram at justinryoung.com. Or hashtag join the conversation at diamondclub.reddit.com. It's good going through those emails. Politics, politics, politics. We'll record tomorrow. But you find yourself contemplating whether or not Hitler would be more damaging as a dog. If you find yourself alone in first class listening to Taylor Swift. If you find yourself in line skating your way into the heart of a divorcee. Or if you are at your lowest point writing to podcasters for whom you admire let this one ring one clarion call in your ear that justin robert young is back motherfuckers and you you friends can only listen to this please don't
Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>